Good morning. All right, so I can't help it. I got to share it for a few minutes. I'm all jazzed up. I just spent uh, the last, well, it's not the last 30 days. I'm on day 29, in fairness. I'm actually not there, but I decided I was really going to focus on happiness these last 30 days. I really I have a vision. I have a vision for a world full of happy people. It's very original. But I really know that this world would change overnight if we had more happy people, that happy people are the most powerful people in the world. I made a video before I started this, you know, I kind of I kind of do that. I don't share most of them because, you know, they're stupid. <laughs> and that's not to put myself down. I'm sure everything I say is very poignant and perfect, but you know, it's not for external digestion. Um, but I made a video about the power of happy people. I felt moved in the moment. I was like, powerful people are the most powerful people in the world because they don't need anything from anyone. And then I had to sit there and I watched and I was like, am I happy? Do I know what it is? Do I know where it is? Do I know how to get it? Because it's one thing for me to say it, but if I don't know how to be it, I have to shut up, right? Like me first, I've got to figure it out to give it or to, to you know, go around lecturing people and feeling better about it than, than them because I have something they don't. No, I'm just kidding. But truly, I think we, if we want to have a conversation, if I want to have a conversation about helping people to be happy, then I get to be happy. And I think that's one thing that's always been sort of my beef with the coaching world or therapeutic world is, you know, a lot of people are trying to help people, but they don't address their own stuff. And so we're contagious. We're always contagious. This is misery loves company. You know, you don't really hear happy people love company, <laughs> happiness loves company, but it does too. And the positive emotions are even more contagious, but everything is contagious. And you're always going to attract people who are like you. But the difference with happy people is that they can actually bring the whole vibrational conversation of the world up where Angry, fearful people, you know, bring the whole conversation down or unworthy or insecure or jealous or, you know, any of those fun things, being powerless, victim. There's one we hear a lot. And so I said, okay, I'm going to really try to do this. What is happiness? Where is it? How do I get it? So I've been doing it and I've been, you know, applying different, you know, tidbits I get. You know, I have a lot of books. I do a lot of reading, you know, from smart people and um, been adding anything that I find, try it out see what happens because you know words don't teach only life experience teaches and it's one thing to read it or to say it and I hate that too and the coach I'm just gonna throw it out right like you got five tips for finding your ultimate man or you know three tips for losing weight you know or ten tips for happiness like I have here that I'm really excited about that I wrote down don't worry I'm not gonna list them here on this video and I'm not gonna sell you anything either I think all this should be free you don't need me you don't need a teacher you don't need anyone you can do it all yourself and it's all free okay I paid a little bit for books books but I'm not charging anyone it's kind of a thing I have so but one of the funniest things I have to share is you know I'm like where am I gonna find happiness I'm gonna do it you know and so I, I've added meditation that's one of the number one rules of ever any satisfied peaceful you know happy guru person is adding meditation and so I added 20 minutes of meditation every single day and wow does it make a difference funny that everybody says you should do that um the first couple of weeks were absolute torture being blind, but I stuck with it, like, go me. And I've done a lot of meditation, but it's been a while. And I had a lot on my mind. It's hard to settle your mind down, but my meditation has definitely picked up a lot and gotten really cool in the last few days. And it, it comes and goes, but I did a reading by Tik Nhat Hoon the other day. I don't know how to say his name, all right? I'm just gonna call him the Tick. It got great stuff. And he had something about mindful walking, which has to do with being really present when you're walking. And I'm like, okay, I can do I go walking. I can leave my phone at home, my earbuds. I have a dog. And so I went mindful walking and got really present. And I had this amazing, hilarious, I think, insight. I was like, as long as I'm looking for happiness or wanting to be happy, I'm not going to be happy because I am putting it somewhere else. I'm putting it in the future. I'm putting it in another place. Where is it? You know, I want to get there. And so I'm always putting it somewhere else in time and space. So it's never going to be with me. And so, you know, that's a good insight. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, I am happy actually. Whoa, brilliant. And I realized that probably that's the case for a lot of us. I'm already happy, but I put a lot of things in the way. 
And that's kind of where my list of things came from, where I realized there's a lot of things blocking us. Uh, either we're not in the present moment, we're in the past, we're in the future. And I've read that a thousand times, but words don't teach, only life experience teaches. And, you know, I only have to read things 10 to 15,000 times before it kind of gets in there. And it's still, it's only a word, but when the experience shows up, if I've read it, you know, 10 to 15,000 times, then when I'm ready for the experience, I kind of have the knowledge I feel queued up. So I had this really big insight that I'm blocking it. It's already here. And there are things we do to block it and there are ways to unblock it. And it's just extremely exciting is really the only premise of this video. But I'm so excited that it's so accessible. And I think it's one of the most important things is what I should say. It's really the point of this video, that being happy is so important. And even for, I struggled with that for a few weeks. It's like, this feels so frivolous. It doesn't have purpose. It's no reason to do it. And I've discovered it is the single most important thing to do no matter who you are, no matter where you are, again, we're contagious. And when we're happy, happy people really are the most powerful people. They really do not need anything from someone else. They really can openly communicate with their needs. They really are just great to be around if you haven't hung out with happy people in a while. And it sort of cures all the ills of not just ourselves, but of the world at this point. And so I think there's a real need and an urgent calling for us to focus on becoming happy in and of ourselves. No one can give you happiness. That's the funny thing, you know, I'm, of course I'm saying, you know, no one has, you know, the only people that can <laughs> help people. I said that the most powerful people are happy people. But the truth is also that only happy people can help anyone because only happy people have something to give. And I can't give what I don't have. And I have a whole thing with that. You gotta be what you say you are. It's so easy to project being something and have it be total BS. Not that I would know anything about that. But, you know, for me now, it's so important to be who I say I am, to be what I say, to say what I mean, and have it be like a thorough, fluid experience of me. And I mean, I'm a complex person. We're all complex. Humans are weird. We got all these, like I said, like layers and, you know, it's like a skin onion, a flesh onion, which is just such a delicious thought. But there's something really to this. And if you aren't happy, you don't have anything to give. And we need a world of people who are shining bright diamonds that are lifting others up, not even by doing anything for them, but just by being. You know, if you go around and be around a happy person, just hang out sort of close to them, your vibration's gonna pick up. You're gonna feel better. Your mood will automatically improve because happy people are the most powerful people in the world. And it won't take many of us to really begin to shift the conversation going on in the world. And that's what this world needs. It needs happy people. Everyone's complaining about politics, the weather, everything's going to hell in a handbasket. And you know what's happening? You're right, because the way you have it is what actually happens. You're much more powerful than you realize. What you focus on grows. What you think is true actually becomes. If only we knew that. And that's why accountability is so important for this conversation. It's really important to know how powerful we are and our contribution to it. And they're constantly complaining, constantly feeling like a victim. You know, everyone's out to get me. Everybody's picking on me. And I can joke about the, the victim conversation because I lived as a victim for a long time. So, you know, I can own that. But there's something really important here about taking our power back and not being powerless victims anymore and realizing I did this thing. I'm creating this world. I'm creating this community. And maybe I should stop, you know, pointing out the crime and pointing out all the problems and constantly talking about how crappy it is because it's not helping. Pointing out the good, pointing out what someone's doing right, looking for wins and what's exciting, then you're helping, then you're doing something good. Thankfully, when you feel like crap, or when you're feeling guilty and unworthy and insecure, while well, you might be, you know, adding to that, you're very not powerful. You really have minimal power, so you can't do too much damage. It's just there's so many goddamn unhappy, scared, you know, powerless victims, people going on. And that's not to put down scared people. I lived a lot of my life in fear and depression, but it's not contributing to the overall conversation that's really gonna shift this planet and really win. And that's what I'm about. Not that I'm, you know, gonna save the world or some crap, but I really do believe that I can shift a conversation by how I live. Probably not through the stupid videos I make because I have no idea why anyone would wanna watch them. But I can by saying it and being it in a powerful place, and I do believe by posting it, which is the real reason I post things, 
but it goes into this like electrical algorithm. You know, I have this like superstitious, I guess, whatever woo woo belief. And I don't think it's superstitious or woo woo. I think it's actually quite factual, but I post it that it gets in there. It gets out there and it's powerful and it has impact beyond what I'll ever realize. Even if it's not watched, it has nothing to do with being watched. It's the energetic impact of adding it to sort of this entire electrical algorithm. And if I put it out there, other people are gonna put it out there. Maybe you'll watch their videos, which would be really cool. And eventually I'm going to add, I'm going to go ahead and share my, my 10 tricks, 10 tricks for happiness. Since, you know, it's one of my pet peeves. I think I should really challenge myself that way to uh, put out something annoying like that. But it's different. It came from a really inspired place. It didn't come from, you know, I mean, I am reading a lot of information. So I guess it's from regurgitating information, but I can admit to being a hypocrite. I've been a hypocrite so many times in my life. I've made so many mistakes. I don't really give a crap. I can own it and I don't mind it, but there's a difference between authentic hypocrisy and inauthentic hypocrisy. I don't think that's a thing. <laughs> I think hypocrisy is just hypocrisy probably. We'll come back to that point, but <laughs> I do think that there's really something important here, all jokes aside, and I hope that you can join me in that assessment. So anyway, thanks for listening. More to come. Be happy. That's the main point. I love you.